Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's Russ here from Porky's Corner. The biggest gob in sport. We say the things on here. The IFL dance say. Bop, bop, bang. Today we're joined by Michael. When he speaks. How are you doing, Michael? How are you doing, mate? You okay? I'm all right. Uh, what have you been up to? You're looking well. Uh, London for the weekend, to be fair. Is that a West Brom? Not Rock? a mad one. No, no, no. Just a bloody gym top, mate. I was planning on doing the gym today, but I can't be bothered anymore. Coulda, woulda, shoulda. <laughs> yeah. I'm like that myself at times. I just don't feel like doing it, but... Hey-ho! Right, uh, let's get stuck straight in with a two-parter then. Are you ready? Let's go. Let's go. Right, Crystal Palace. Why put a show on there? It's like middle of nowhere, isn't it? Right hard to get to. I can't work it out. Yeah. They were having the dark screens on again to cover the empty chairs at the back, weren't they? <laughs> <laughs> but what they do, you see, they get companies to come in, you know, like Canning Conveyors from Workshop and that. What they do, they do all lighting and this and that and blah, blah, blah make it all look like it's chock a block. But personally, wouldn't that show have been better off at, uh, I don't know, your call? <laughs> I don't, maybe a little bit of some copper box or something like that. Do you know, do you know what yeah, I mean? There wasn't, yeah. Eddie's got one on at the Copper Box coming up soon. Any Johnny Fisher 7,000 or whatever he reckons they're going to have. They'll not fill that out. They'll comp everybody. But I can see where Eddie's coming from with that. But you see, problem is, promoters, when I worked for Dennis, I used to book arenas. What they try and do, they try and outmaneuver people. Dennis always used to He's say... He's gone on mute, Russell. Have I? Can you hear me? No. I'm not on mute. Can You're back now. You're back. I'm You're back. back. Right, when I worked for Dennis, he always used to book arenas and that. And I said, Dennis, why is it whenever you book an arena, you're always trying to get it so nobody else can book it for weeks after and all that? And he said, well, as you, as we go along, you'll see how it goes on. Now, what happens is, all the promoters, they try, what they try and do, they try and cut your legs off. Now, Steffi Bull used to do it, didn't he, with Dome and that. He'd have an exclusive so nobody else could get it. Dennis... Tried to have an exclusive, I think, with certain arenas. I think he might have one with that ice arena that he uses, but they try with Pond Sport and stuff like that. Not everybody does it, but you can pay fortune to a Pond Sport, you can pay seven grand out. But if you book it a few times, you can stop other people using it. So it takes you out that area, other promoters, doesn't it? And there's quite a few up here, isn't there? There's obviously Dennis, Steffi, Izzy, and Ahmed, you know, from next door, GMB. They've got a Dazon deal now, haven't they, apparently, or Bean got him it. So that's what promoters do. So, but it is what it is, isn't it? But maybe Eddie's blocked the copper box for Ben Shalom at Sky. Well, you won't put it past them, would you? You know, because he's not nah. he's not popular, Ben, is he? We Spotty Frank and Eddie Hills, is he? Do you know what I mean? Spotty Frank. <laughs> Execute them with Oxy 10. <laughs> but let me give you a tip, Spotty. When I were doing that big sentence, and you used to get spots, because it's easy to pick them up when you're in the clink. Put toothpaste on them at night, and when you wake up, you've got a curl and a custard on them. And you can pop them easy. But you don't pop it that way, you pull it. That way you don't get pocky mark face like Callum, bag of that, face like a bag of nail Smith. You end up with a good skin, like Porky. <laughs> So, yeah, you were saying, Michael, go on. I wasn't saying anything, really. Oh, yeah. I just said there were a lot of empty chairs. I was quiet for once, Russell. Ben Shalom, a.k.a. Adrian Moll, why don't you send your uncle Porky an email with some freebies and I would have bigged your show up, eh? You're on borrowed time at Sky, you boy, I'm hearing. That's the word. Right. Here we go. Bill and Smith. React Porte. What did you think to the fight, Michael? Over to you. I thought it was a boring fight, I did. I thought it was a bit of a... I thought it'd be a bit more entertaining than that. But I thought, because Billam Smith built such a big lead-up, like, to be fair, I thought them scorecards were a joke. I didn't. He won by three, four, five rounds on the scorecards, whatever. But I thought he won by, like, eight. Yeah. I thought it was, like, 10-2. I did something like that. Do you know what I mean? Did you? Yeah. 
Do you think React Porte weren't fit because they were doing a lot of holding, wasn't it? I thought Bill and Smith was doing the old in, to be honest. Well, how come you had it to him until then if he won all round? I just thought he was just doing enough to win the round for the first minute and a half and then just spoiling it at the end. Oh, I did. <laughs> way I saw it is oh. React Porte is like a wilder type guy. He's a one yeah. he's a one trick pony, isn't he? We can only punch, that's it, Connor. That's it, nothing else. He can punch mm. the best of them. He's like uh is it Tommy Fletcher at Cruiserway who Mark Tibbs trains? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> switch, I, I, I forgot where, where he's from now. But he, he, he can crack. But I think he's a bit more to his game. But React Porte, for me, he's like one of them wiry types, you know, like Deontay Wilder. And I think if they can't knock you out or hurt you, I think they run out of ideas. You know, a bit like George Foreman when he couldn't do not with Ali. He just ran out of ideas, didn't he, really? And then punched his son out. Uh I think he's got a decent chin, that Billum Smith as well, to be honest. He's basic, though, in there. I reckon that jail for tyrant slaughter him, but, like... Do you think, oh, Michael, that uh, Shane McGuigan has to be given a lot of credit for turning that Billum Smith around? Because he lost to Rick Porter a few years ago, didn't he? And he's gone in with him again to defend his belt against somebody that beat him. Albeit on a split decision, so... Could have gone either way. People are saying, no, I had React Porte winning that first one. But uh, it takes some balls to fight somebody that's beat you before, doesn't it? So, as far as I'm concerned, yeah. Billum Smith now can run around and say, I beat everybody I fought, can't he? Which is what most fighters yeah. want, how champions behave, isn't it? And he beat him at his own, you know, in his he own backyard. In his own backyard at his own game. I personally think that Billum Smith now... He's up there because I had him to lose against Rack Porter and Bookies did and everybody and the dog did, didn't they? You all had him to yeah. lose. So I think Shane McGuigan has to be given a lot of credit and I think at the moment, I think it's a toss-up between him and Joe G who were top dogs for trainers in country. What do you think? They're way out there than, than the rest. Do you, do you agree, Michael? Yeah, I think so, yeah. There's nothing much. We don't have loads and loads of trainers in the UK that are brilliant, do we? Everyone's saying about that Joe McNally, but he seems to make a lot of excuses that Joe McNally does. Listen, I'm not being funny. Joe McNally, you're not even in top 10. No offence, you've got a long way to go. You need to achieve something. But a win over your bank don't get you to be to, to be the best guy. I mean, trainers are like flavour of the months, aren't they? But the way I see it is this. Why would you put Beefy Smith in a fight if he's dead at the weight? The man's dead at the weight and he couldn't do nothing. What sort of trainer does that? Is it Did he do it because he wanted pain and it were a pay-per-view? Or did he do it because he thought he could win even though he are dead at the weight? That, to me, is a poor trainer. I'm sorry. He should have been pulled out of that fight. It should have been rescheduled. I don't know what you think. Yeah. He said he had to do it for the money or something, didn't he? He actually said Liam Smith did it for the money, apparently. Well, there you go, brasses, aren't they? Well, if that's what, if you're willing to go to a to a fight, into a fight, knowing you're going to get beat, everybody around you will know that as well. Did they put money on you? Did they put money on that happening? You know what I mean? Boxing, isn't it, mate? Right? Yeah. You know this. Talking about putting, talking about putting money on things, Russell. All the followers should have put some money on Jack Massey, shouldn't they? Like we said. Listen. I'm Team Jack Massey. I like him. He's my pal. He's my pal. He's my pal. He's a pal of mine. I like, I like him, Jack Massey. He's all right. He's been on my channel a few times. I mean, when I first met him, I thought, here we go. Big six foot four wheel champion here. I'm going to get strung up. I thought, because I gave him a bit of stick, you know. You know, when I, when I did them interviews with Dennis, because he left Dennis, didn't he? And Dennis were like, that better give him stick if he's left me. <laughs> So I gave him a bit of stick, but listen, there's two sides to every story, isn't there? There's Dennison's side, and then there's a, a fighter in his manager's side, isn't there? The promoter's always <laughs> going to spew vital if somebody leaves them, isn't he? But if Dennis has, has that cheesed off about it, he, he needs to back his words at what he said on my channel, didn't it? Which was, I hope he's got deep pockets. Well, I don't see any court action. Big Ron! Do you? Where's court action? Where's Jack Massey? Has he been served? No. So, 
Personally, I don't think Dennis will ever take a fight to, to court again after he had that incident with Eugene Maloney. I think it cost him 150 grand, that Dennis. So I don't think Dennis will go to court ever, 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 ever again. I think they just settle. But uh, if fighters leave you, let them go, I say. Contracts don't mean shite anyway in boxing. If they don't want to work with you, let them go. If you had a business, Michael, right, and somebody said, yeah, I don't like working here, me, what would you say? Sling your up. Go then. Go. There you go. So, okay. Uh, Jack Massey done Chamberlain. Your Commonwealth and European titles added to his IBO World title at Cruiserweight. So, and two more belts on the Joe, Ma Joe Gallagher mantelpiece. They're just piling up belts, aren't they, over there at Moss Side? Yeah, but I couldn't believe I was at Chamberlain took that fight, to be honest. Like, he basically had the option to fight um, the mandatory one, it? Chev Clark or someone else on the Eddie Earn show. Ben Shalom's pulled him out of that and made him fight Jack Massey, which is still a tough fight, which we both thought he would lose. And we both said last week on here that he would lose for probably about half the money. And now he's lost. Mm. Uh, what do you think's next for Isaac Chamberlain now? Do you think he's on slide? Yeah. Yeah. He's in a bad position now, isn't he? What about Jack Massey? Are they going to put him in with Chris Bill and Smith on Sky? Or do you think React Forte will get a trilogy with uh, Bill and Smith? You can't have a trilogy after that, can you? That was one sided. Uh, absolute. <laughs> He might go up in weight that rear poor, hadn't he? Listen, if half of them had any brains, they'd be trying to get some weight on and go into heavyweight mix work, do I'm it? saying, yeah. So I reckon React Paul might go up in weight. He could try and fight a Cole, he couldn't he? Yeah. So that'd be one for him. I reckon Billum Smith fights that Ramirez for the other title. Yeah. To unify because he's an easier fight than Opatire. Yeah. Jack Massey, I don't know. He's not going to fight Billum Smith because he'll get a unification. He's a tough fight for Billum Smith, but I think Billum Smith would beat him. Yeah. Um, I don't know, really. He might fight... He might actually fight Chev Clark or one of the Eddie Earn guys, hadn't he? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, do you think Eddie might try and pinch Billum Smith? Nah, I can't see it, you know. To me, he's not like a massive ticket seller. He's not a massive fan base. And he's a bit, he doesn't really like say much, does he? He's a bit of a boring fighter. Seems a nice guy in that, but he doesn't sell tickets, does he? And go at press conferences and cause any drama or, you know what I mean? He just, he's like, hello, yep, yeah, thankful to be here. Just want to go home to my wife. Just want the title. Do you know what I mean? He's just a bit plain Jane, isn't he? Well, isn't that good? Because he can obviously fight, can't he? Just because he doesn't shoot his mouth off. I mean, we get Tyson Fury shooting his mouth off constantly. And he was like a wet fish when he got in there with Usyk, wasn't he? Or like a fish out of water. Mm, I know what you mean. But the ones that really sell all the tickets and create all the money are the ones that kick off at a press conference or throw a fucking table or... Do you know what I mean? Chisora. Yeah. Mm, okay. Uh Ben Whitaker went 10 rounds with a bin man. He can't punch at all, he can't, can he? His, his punch power's not there. So when you go up the levels, it's like... Like Sonny Edwards, I really like Sonny Edwards. And obviously he's in a lower weight class, and I think he's a good boxer and all that. But when he went to the absolute very, very top level, you've got to be able to keep the bloke off you. If you can't keep the bloke off you at that level and, res and give him a bit of risk, like having respect your power, what you can land back on him. They'll just walk forward and in 12 rounds at that level, you're going to get knocked out. Mm. So I think that will end up happening with Ben Whitaker. I do. Yeah. Yeah. Because he's landed like three shots on these guys. He's levels above them at boxing levels. So he's landing like three shots basically at them, what they're not seeing and he's still not knocking them out. So like, there's probably another five, six, seven levels to go from this guy. Where he fought the weekend. So when he goes to the very top, how is he gonna how's he gonna do it then? Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. What about Dan Aziz? Do you think he's cooked as well now? He drew with a bin man over eight rounds. I don't know. But it's just like... Dan Aziz wasn't really like gifted technically, was he? He wasn't in the Olympics. He didn't do all that, what Buwati did. So he's had to fight his way up the hard way, hasn't he? So he's been in 50-50 fights and tough fights and got himself up. And then he got to the mountain top and fought Buatsi. And that would just all that and all that training and training camps to take it out of you, wouldn't he? And then now he's probably having to come down after that. And he's just drawing with, I don't even know who the guy was, but he wouldn't, well, nobody knows who he was. Do you think Dan Aziz has overachieved, Michael? What's he won? And, and, and they got domestic belts and that. British title. Yeah, probably. Yeah, I reckon. With yeah, all the people at the division. The hard way. Let me just stop you there. He's done it the hard way, hasn't he, Dan Aziz? Yeah. Mm. Mm. Uh, would you like to see Dan Aziz and Ben Whitaker in a crossroads fight? Before Saturday night, probably, yeah. What about now? Not now. Why not? After, after he's just drew with him. Well, the, well, Ben, ben Whitaker couldn't get that bin man out who had a padded record, could he? I suppose, yeah, maybe, yeah, that'd be, uh, maybe. I suppose what you mean, but Ben Whitaker would box his head off, wouldn't he? Because his levels above the one thing Dan is easy. He was never a boxer, was he? He was really tough and put pressure on, and you know what I mean. He's not a quality boxer, is he? So unless he chins Ben Whitaker, he's got no chance, has he? No. Let me just stop you there. Somebody left a comment. Uh, Cameron was telling me regarding how can they watch your debut MMA fight. I forgot the guy's name. Can you, do you want to explain how they can watch it? It's not. It'll be on YouTube somewhere. It's on on the YouTube channel. But I'll post the link if when it comes. I don't even have the link at the moment, so I'll have a look at it. Um, but or I'll send it to you to post if you want. Just stick it on the comments section, and I'll pin it at top of comments for somebody. Because yeah. you don't have to think that you're talking waffle, do they? I've seen you fight. I've seen you fight in cage, so. But uh, if you want to just pin it onto the comment section, I'll do the I'll do the business. I'll find it and do that. All yeah. right. Uh, <laughs> it's a boring. It is a boring fight, though, isn't it? Like, you've seen it. It is crap. But like, well, whatever, really. funny, but I would have flogged him. OEB. I would have flogged him on the uh -huh. spot inside sixty seconds. I would have done uh, if I were a lot younger than I am now, I'm pushing fifty-four year old. But I would have got stuck into him if I were your age, well into him. <laughs> I'm not really bothered about his physique and that. He had the art of a P, didn't he? <laughs> it was the uh, it was the occasion that got to me. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what happened. Hey, listen, man, I, I remember playing pool in front of a lot of people years ago, and like my asshole falling out, man, I get squeaking. Do you know what I mean? And your game's all over the place. The game went mm. off. Sorry, right, knocking him in the garage, in it at home, or knocking him in here. Because <laughs> there's people watching you, but the two oh. people there weren't there for you. Two thousand for there, yeah. It was absolutely I'd have been clapping with two thousand watching. I don't like any of that pressure. Uh, Fran Hennessy. Uh, remember meeting her when she went a little munchkin at a frotch fight, uh, her and her brother. Uh, she's four and oh now. I think she's all right, you know, uh, as a as a fighter. I think she's got a nice little style going. She's nineteen. Four and oh, there's only four people in a weight category in the UK, so there's never going to be any domestic titles, is there? We're just going to have to keep importing people in for her, but I think she probably could be looking at a wheel title in about 12 months' time. What do you think, Michael? Yeah, I like her. She's entertaining, seems to have a good personality, a bit of a laugh, whatever. Sells tickets, bit of an exciting style, fast, good, you know, you know. Like a bit of a Joe Carl Zaggy as a woman in she a bit, you know what I mean? I think, but yeah, she's all right, good to look at, not bad, decent. She'll be popular with it. The we my lot all watch this because she's got pigtails. All the fights on there not worth mentioning. Izzy and GMB's uh, Asher's lot next door. They they've got a deal with Dazone. Do you think that uh, there's going to be fights now for lower end guys? No, not the top tier stuff on Dazone and that. And do you think that's how boxing's heading now? They're going to put like 
shows on there. Not everything's going to be pay per view or world titles and that. And boxing's going back to how it used to be. You think? I think so. I think because there's a lot more interest in boxing again now, and like people are getting back into it. Mm-hmm. People are trying to get back in at all kinds of levels. So you've got like these shows on DAZN and Eddie Hearn's doing next gen shows and whatever like that. There's got to be. Because like you had, you had that bit of a crossover period, didn't you? Where like Frot retired, Hay retired, uh, Hatton retired, Carl Zaggy, they all these good ones, they all retired. So there was a bit of a period where there was nobody. And I think they're realizing now that if you don't build them up from the bottom, then you can't just have a superstar overnight, can you? Do you know what I mean? Do you think Ben Whittock is a superstar? Because everybody's saying he's the new Roy Jones. Do you think that's an insult to Roy Jones? Yeah, massive insult to Roy Jones, I do. Roy Jones. He will never achieve anywhere near. I think Roy would have put him in his top pocket if they were both 5-0 and or whatever Ben is. If they both had the same amount of fights, you know, after one year, I think Roy would have dealt with him as a middleweight and he's a light heavyweight, isn't he? Yeah. What are you weighing in at now? 14-6. Ten ten. <laughs> Keep hope down. Uh, people are trying to fight me uh, and kill, so I have to be I have to be careful. <laughs> I was in London the weekend. You should have seen some of the cakes I was eating. Oh my god! <laughs> hey, what sponge cake? Cakes. Yeah, they do some good cake in London. <laughs> it's you about know, ten pound a slice, like, but it's good. <laughs> do you know what my favourite cake is? When I was a kid, I used to like Batewell tarts, Mister Kipling. I'm there. Uh, no, I wasn't there. <laughs> Well, now that you haven't got a fight lined up, Michael, what are you going to do? Just keep eating and eating. No, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm in a bit of trouble. Well, Mike, <laughs> I need to get back in the gym. Yeah, but when you, when you got your date before and that, you still knocked that two and a half stone off, didn't you? Pretty simple, wasn't it? Yeah. Really? Well, I've got, a, I've got a lad's holiday in Benidorm next month. <laughs> so that's going to be a bit of a problem. Watch out all the women in Benidorm. Yeah. And then... <laughs> and then uh, after that, I'm going to have to get back in the gym, I think. Okay. Okay. Uh, Javonta Davis, he'd done that Frank Martin in eight rounds. 13 0, 28 on Button Moon. He's got to fight Loma now, on it? The Bob Farber's saying they're in talks, but I think what they'll do, they'll just keep getting it the old winning talks, win talks, win talks, because the talks have started, but. With Bob Arum, it's usually a five-year plan, isn't it, when anything like this happens, you know, when there's going to be yeah. a big, big fight. They never see him in a rush. They just want to milk it and milk it and milk it. Do you think boxing fans are going to get impatient if they don't get Loma and Javonta in it next 12 months? We don't want to see a May with a Pacquiao where when they get in ring, they're cooked, do we? I just think... Because um, Gavonta's like... Loma's the only one can beat him at the moment, isn't he? At that weight. Yeah. So, they want to get him old, don't they? Like, really old. Because they know he's still good. He lost to somebody, Lomachenko did. Who did he lose to? Devin Haney. And there's absolutely no way he lost that fight. So, like, you know, he's still dangerous, isn't he? He's nowhere near where he was, but he's still dangerous. So, they're just protecting their asset, aren't they, with Gavonta, because he's the only one that can beat him. But... I'll personally be annoyed if I don't see it in the next 12 months. I don't watch Gavonta Davis, but I didn't watch it the weekend because I knew it was... What's the point, Mark? Do you know what I mean? Mm. Yeah. Do you like Gavonta, though? Not really, no. You don't rate him? I think he's a good I think he's a good fighter, but as a person, seems a bit of a knob. Yeah, but we're talking boxing here. He's, he's up there pound for pound, isn't he? Come on. Oh, pound, yeah, pound for pound on the... Yeah, he's he's an unbelievable fighter, yeah. You think him and Mayweather are going at it at lightweight? Who do you think he'd win? Mayweather. How many, how many wins did Mayweather have at lightweight, though? He didn't have that many, did he? he no, but prime for prime, I'd still say Mayweather's a better fighter. Okay. Uh, uh, where would you put Javonta Davis in the all-time greats for lightweight? Which don't forget, lightweight. It's one of the glamour divisions, isn't it? That go back hundred and odd years, isn't it? You know, 
one of the original seven divisions, isn't it? Because that was 18 weight categories now, isn't there? But back then, there were just seven, weren't there? You know, it went 135, nine stone nine, to 147. There were no 140, mm. other, which is like welter, isn't it? So, I reckon like, I'm probably... Hey? Top. He's got to be in the top 10, I know, you reckon? I think he squeaks into the top 10. I don't think he puts a dint in Duran in the 70s, Joe. Nah. He ain't top five, but he's probably back end of the top 10, like, I reckon. Well, what I want to know is how would he fare against Jim Portable Watt? <laughs> He'd have knocked Jim Watt out. <laughs> Sorry about that, Jim. I like Jim Watt as well. Uh, okay, Johnny Horsecock is coming for some criticism from the GAD and all the rest of the Fury Brigade for being critical about Tyson Fury. Do you think Johnny? Do you think Johnny deserves that? Joe slagged him off the other day, didn't he? Said, mm -hmm. "No, I disagree with that." Spencer Joe Ben Oliver were disagreeing with uh, Johnny Nelson. Johnny Nelson, yeah. He yeah, said, well, what you've said Oliver, about Tyson Fury is wrong. Spencer Oliver and Simon Judge Jordan, they've become like cheerleaders, aren't you, you two? And little lickers, monitor lizards. That's what they've become. And I were a big advocate and fanboy of Simon Jordan. I thought you were going to get things moving in boxing. All he's done is stick his tongue where it sh where he shouldn't. You know what I mean? Monitor lizard. Uh, we saw the same thing though, didn't we? Really, with Nazim Hamid. Obviously, I'm from up this area, and we all remember Naz when he used to bounce around. I remember Naz when he did 140 under viaduct because I've tried that a few times. <laughs> and cut it at viaduct, and he got he got pulled by police, didn't he? I think in a yellow Porsche or something, but. Near where I'm from in Doncaster years ago. Naz were rubbing a lot of people up the wrong way. And Johnny, I know you and Naz fell out, but Johnny, Horscott, you were a monitor lizard around Naz at the time. Oh, I know some corkers about Johnny. They all clung to Naz, didn't they? Because they needed him. Now, Naz came to a nightclub in Doncaster years ago in a Ferrari. And his mates were following him in a Vauxhall Nova. And when they left this club, he didn't even drink, by the way. He, he drank pop, apparently. He uh, he, he wrote it off on White Rose Way on a roundabout with Sprari. And he then left his mates with car. You wait for the tow truck and jumped in over and shot off. So he had a bit of an attitude, but he also thought he were unbeatable. He became a bit of an irritant and a bully. You know, we were going up to amateur kids in Brendan's gym and Dominic's and, like, nipping them. And doing stuff like that and telling them they were shit and they were never going to do no and all that. He turned into like a little monster. And Johnny will have seen the same traits that Tyson's got. Because when you get to that level and you're earning that kind of money, you think you're invincible, don't you? You know, and yeah. now he's up with 60 million out of the job. Well, Tyson's in triple digits now, isn't he? So he's probably earned four times up Nas. Nas and, and you become like... You just think you're untouchable. And I think Usyk just got his head down and just kept thinking, oh, this is going to be easy work, this. And apart from rounds four, five and six, where Usyk got it wrong, and I think he just took a breather. I think Fury weren't in the fight, apart from them three fights. I think Usyk let Fury empty his tank because he looked to me like he was playing possum. I watched it again last night. He looked to me like Usyk was trying to make out he were, he were ready for being took. And Fury just kept emptying and emptying and emptying. And I didn't see anything else after round six. What do you think to that, Michael? Yeah, I, I agree with what you're saying. Um, it's a tough one to come back from. But he has to do it, really, doesn't he? he has to, if he's going to fight again, he has to fight him again, doesn't he? Yeah. I, do, I, I, I get what you're saying. You get what I'm saying. Okay. Mm. Okay. Uh, who's currently best trainer in UK? Mm. On form. We said earlier, didn't we? There's either Joe G 
Adams, Shane McGregor or Ben Davidson. Ben Davidson, you're having a laugh. What has he done I'm with anybody from scratch? He's not done no with anybody from scratch. Not from scratch, but from, with Lee Wood. He took him from like being absolutely no good at all, rubbish, lost at British title level to where he is. Yeah, you could say that. He turned it round for Lee Wood, but like I said, I, I like to judge him when they're fetching kids from turning over. You know, I think he probably could be one for the future. He's young enough. I think him and Shane are probably going to be top dog, dog, top dogs, but. Joe says he's going to be training while Jimmy Tibbs' age, so Joe's going to be hanging around, and he's my age, Joe, same year as me at school. So, I don't know, what do you think? Yeah, obviously, he's passionate about it, and he, Joe Gallagher, he'll never give up, he'll still be going when he's Bob Arum's age. Do you know what? It's funny, actually, because when I go through there, I'm always, I'm always early, me, whenever I go, and... Joe's always first in. I was waiting for him. The, the few times I've been over, probably a handful of times, I've been bang on. He's first in, in and last out. And he's on phone while midnight. He's 20 hours a day, him, 18 hour days in. He don't switch off. Uh, that's why you don't look as good as me, Joe, for your age. <laughs> no, he don't switch off. You've got to give him it. Credit for that, haven't you? Do you know what I mean? He, he's mastered his craft, but I just think he's just piling belts apart, isn't he? Piling them up. You can tell with Joe Gallagher, though, when he's in the corner for his fighters. Like, he was, me and you were messaging the other night when, we, when that McGowan was on, fighting. And Joe Gallagher was in the corner with him. And that McGowan was totally underprepared for that fight, wasn't he? What we said about his padded record and... He'd fought some geese at one and sixty-eight, and then he's fighting for the European title in his next fight. Yeah. And Joe Gallagher was still in there, and he was getting bashed up a bit, and he was like proper enthusiastic and all, you know. He he really cared. You can tell he's the one that like proper cares about it, and he Joe Gallagher. What did you think about that? Uh, you know, fighting a guy one and sixty-eight, and then going in for a <laughs> title fight. It's just shambolic, isn't it? Like that guy's record, McCauley McGowan. Was fighting for the European title against Abbas Barrow, who's just beat Sam Eggington. You know, not world level, but having a few stepping stone wins. And you've had a, a win against a guy one and sixty eight, and then I think the other one was three and forty six. You've come off the back of two losses, fought them two records, and then you're back in for the European title. It's just, uh, how does that happen? Like, how's that any good preparation to try and win? Do you know what I mean? I remember when I went to Dennis says we had fights not back that were but were a lot better. A lot better routes than that one and the board would knock it back and so but it, it's up to the board, isn't it, on the day, isn't it? I mean it's like Fred it's becoming Fredbear now, isn't it? You know, if, if that's what we're having to do to get title fights on, because the next generation of kids are not coming through, are they? No. So do you want to go that's to what we said about the whole Sorry? That's what we said about the whole Saudi stuff when people are trying to pad the records out for a payday, but it don't help you. Like, he wasn't helped in that ring there with them, with beating that Georgian bloke, one and 68, who I'd beat and you'd beat, and half the people watching this had beat. There's no there's no preparation help there to go and win, is there? Well, if has you done him any favours? If you've had 69 fights and you've won one, you're not a boxer. You can't box Cadbury's cream eggs. If you've had six, <laughs> well, if you sprayed cars for me ten years ago, I said you've been here. You've done sixty-nine paint jobs. There's only one any good. You're not a body shop man. Collect your cards. Well, if you went to bed with a bird sixty-nine times and she were only happy with you once, she'd be a fool for having you in a bed again, wouldn't she? See where I'm coming from. <laughs> Go to part two, Michael. Well, where is my in a bit? All right. Hot, hot bang. Thanks for liking and subscribing and leaving a comment. Don't forget to watch Porky's Corner sister channel, which is called Porky's International. All right? Porky's International on YouTube. One, peace out.